Okay, so we have a causal graph. Now we need to um, use the information from the causal graph to influence our modeling. So let's move this off to the side and we'll refer to it again later. We'll come to our studio now and we'll start by creating a new project in our studio that will hold all of the data and the R markdown files and everything that we're working with. So here's just our studio pointed at my home directory, nothing important there. That's where my desktop is and downloads and documents and other stuff. So we don't really care about that. What we wanna do is make a new folder somewhere on my computer and have our point at that folder and then everything will be relative to that folder. So I'm going to come to our studio, go to file, new project, and there we go. We're gonna create a new directory. It's going to be a new project and we will call it um, matching-ipw because we're doing matching and inverse probability weighting. Um, we'll create it as a subdirectory on the desktop. So it'll make a new folder on my desktop called matching-ipw. And we, if I check this, then it'll open up a new RStudio and leave the current one open. Um, I don't care about that. I don't, I don't have anything important in this one, so I'll just have it replace it. So if I click on Create Project, it will close this RStudio and open a new one, point it at the new folder that it just made. There. So a couple things to check just to make sure we're in the right project folder. Um, if you look at your console tab, it says that R is currently pointed at desktop slash matching IPW. So there's a folder on my desktop called matching IPW. If I look in this top corner here, it shows that I'm in a project called matching IPW. I can click on this drop down menu. Here's all the other projects I've been working with recently. Um, so I'm in the right place. If I look at the files panel, I'm looking inside a folder called um, matching IPW on desktop. And it has one thing in there, which is this rproj file, which just tells our studio that this is a project. If I open that from my desktop, it will open our studio pointed at that folder. Everything's great. So what I can do now is I downloaded the CSV file from the website of the mosquito net um, data, this observational data. It wasn't the trial or anything. It was all fake anyway. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put that data in my project. So I'm going to, this has nothing to do with R, this is just Finder. Um, on Windows, you have a thing called Windows Explorer. Same idea, it just lets you look at things on your computer. So I'll come to my desktop, wow don't have a desktop like this. It looks like this in real life. Ah, um, so what did I call the folder? I called it matching IPW. So there's that RPRJ file. I'm going to make a new folder here. So I'm gonna right click and say new folder. We're gonna name it data, um, could be named whatever. I just like to put all of my data sets in a folder called data. So it's easy to remember where they are. And then I'm gonna to go to my downloads folder and drag that CSV file into data. Um, you can do this however you want. Again, this has nothing to do with R. This is just me moving a file into a folder, and there it is. So now if I come back to R Studio and I refresh this panel, I have a folder called data, and if I look in there, there's my mosquitonets.csv file. So good, we are ready to start. Um, so I'm going to come and make a new R Markdown file. So file, new file, R Markdown. We're just gonna leave all of the default settings, hit okay. And I'm gonna select from right here, line seven, all the way to the bottom and delete all of that placeholder code there because we don't need it. And then we'll name it matching and IPW. Okay. And we can go ahead and save this document. It's going to want to save it in our working directory in our project folder, which is good. And we'll just call this fun times. Okay, so now we have a document called fun times. We could knit it if we wanted to, but it would create kind of an empty file. There's nothing in it except a title. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to follow some best practices. We're gonna use some headings. Um, so we can navigate the document more easily. So we're gonna make a, a heading here and we'll call this load data. So this is where we're going to load the data. To give us a little bit more space, I'm gonna shrink down the console here. Um, there we go. So to load this data, we're going to insert a new chunk where we're gonna run some R codes. I'm gonna click on this, this insert button 
and say insert R chunk. You can also do this if you press Command Option I or Control Alt I on Windows, um, and it will insert an empty chunk. We'll name this chunk because of good practices, and we'll call this one load data. Um, when you're naming chunks, you can't have any spaces in the name, so we just did load dash data. Um, I know that this is going to generate some messages when it loads a CSV file. It'll tell you all about the different columns. And so because I know that, I can actually just come and turn that off already and just say message equals false and warning equals false. If you don't want to type that, you can click on the gear icon for the chunk and tell it to not show warnings and not show messages. You can also rename it there too. Um, but you can also just type it directly in here. So we're going to load the tidyverse library because that lets us do a whole bunch of plotting and it lets us do um, data manipulation and data loading and a whole bunch of other things. Um, so if we say library tidyverse, if we just run this chunk, um, it will run and now tidyverse is loaded. And because we turned off the messages and warnings, we don't actually see all of the talkative messages that tidyverse shows. Um, so next we want to load that CSV file into R, and we're going to name it something. Um, we'll just name it mosquitoes. I don't want to type mosquitoes. We'll call it nets because mosquitoes is too many letters. Um, so we're going to call this object nets. We're going to use, um, we're going to assign something to this object named nets. So to get that backwards arrow, that's R's way of saying equals. Um, you can do that by pressing Option minus or Alt minus, and it'll type that for you. So we're going to say read underscore CSV. So we want to read a CSV file and save it as an object named nets. The CSV file lives in our data folder slash mosquito nets dot CSV. The way I got that to, to expand really fast is I press tab. Um, and because I started with M, that's the only file in there. If there are multiple files that started with M, it would show a, a drop-down list of, of potential files to use. Um, but there's just one there, so it auto-completed nicely. So if we run this now, and if we look up in the environment panel, we have an object called nets. And I can click on it and look at it here. We have an ID column. We have whether or not they used a net. We have um, a numeric version of that column with one and zero. We have malaria risk. I think this goes on a scale of 0 to 100. 10 is the lowest. Highest is 90. That person's going to get malaria. Um, we have income that ranges from 300 to almost 1,500. We have this health score, this 5 person, very unhealthy. Um, this 100 person, perfect health, neat. Um, number of people in the household, whether or not they're eligible for the program. The average nighttime temperatures, I think this is in Celsius. Yeah, unless, yeah, it's probably not Fahrenheit. I made this data, it's Celsius. Um, and then resistance to insecticides measured, I think it's a scale of zero to 100. So this, this area has high resistance to insecticide, this area does not. Okay, so that's what's in our data set. Um, just kind of looking at it, um, figuring out just what's in the data. So that's neat. Um, so we could knit the file if we really wanted to. That will start from scratch and go through and run each of the chunks and then generate an HTML file of the knitted document, which should look like this. There it is. So there's our matching, there's our load data, and there's the code where we loaded the data, and that's all we've done so far in this analysis. Super exciting. Um, the nice thing about using these headings is that it lets us navigate our document better. If we click right down here where you see this um, yellow pound sign thing, if you click on this, um, this is basically a table of contents for your document. So if I click on this, it'll jump me up to load data. If I click on the chunk name, it'll take me to the chunk. Um, it knows that it's called load data because it's getting that um, from the name. Had I not named it, it would just say chunk one, chunk two, chunk three, and it just goes sequentially and so best practice is to um, kind of name them so you can jump around and find them easier. If you want, there's this button right here that shows the document outline. It doesn't show the chunk names, but it shows the headings. And so there's my load data heading. If I had another heading, I could jump around to them. If, they, if there was a second level heading, it would be indented in slightly. Um, so you can kind of show that on and off there. 
So we are ready to begin our analysis.